In a world where aviation connects distant lands, there exists a gateway that weaves tales of adventure, culture, and progress. This is a journey through time, where we unveil the history of a legendary place that has helped shape the course of Vancouver and Canada as a whole. Let me tell you. Located on Sea Island, or Iskusofen, in Hong Kong, the Vancouver International Airport has been a witness to countless milestones and has played a pivotal role in connecting people, cultures, and dreams. From its humble beginnings as a simple airstrip to a bustling global hub, YDR's evolution reflects the resilience and ingenuity of a nation. The original location of Vancouver International Airport was not at its current site. The first official airport serving Vancouver was known as Minoru Field, named after a local racehorse, and it was located in the Minoru Park area of Richmond, British Columbia, about 6.4 kilometers south of the current YDR site. Minoru Field opened in 1929 and primarily served as a small grass airstrip for private and commercial aircraft. However, due to its limited capacity and the growing demand for air travel, plans were made to relocate the airport to a larger and more suitable location. However, prior to the establishment of Minora Field, an intriguing proposal emerged for a completely different location. Spanish banks. Surprisingly, only a few are aware that this scenic area was once considered as a potential site for the airport. The visionary behind this audacious proposal, submitted to the city of Vancouver in 1928, was none other than Ronald Roderick McLaren, a distinguished Canadian aviation pioneer. His plan for Spanish banks envisioned a two-faced airport and seaplane base, complete with hangars, taxi stands, custom facilities, and even illuminated fencing for night operations. The future development of an airstrip field was also factored in, positioned to the west of the site, boasting three runways approximately 600 meters in length each. Interestingly, the concept of constructing airports on beachfronts near city centers bore similarities to iconic airports like New York's LaGuardia and John F. Kennedy, which would come to fruition in the following decades. The estimated cost for this ambitious undertaking in 1928 was a staggering 3.1 million Canadian dollars, equivalent to roughly 53 million in today's currency. The proposal received approval from the municipality of Point Grey, Yet, regrettably, it failed to materialize. In that same year, then-Mayor of Vancouver William H. Malkin, along with the Vancouver Board of Trade, ultimately opted for the Sea Island site that would become the chosen location for the airport. In 1931, land was acquired on Sea Island, just off the coast of Richmond. The new airport, initially known as Sea Island Airport, opened in 1931 and was later renamed Vancouver International Airport in 1968. This move allowed for significant expansion and development over the years, ultimately transforming YDR into the bustling and modern airport we know today. Here are some fascinating facts about YDR. In 1931, Vancouver Airport welcomed 1,072 passengers. In 2019, YDR welcomed over 26 million passengers. YDR holds the distinction of being the world's first airport to achieve Salmon Safe certification. With a robust network of 55 airlines, YDR acts as a vital link 
connecting people and businesses to an impressive array of over 125 non-stop destinations across the globe. The South Terminal, part of the original pre-1968 terminal, remains operational and is home to Pacific Coastal Airlines and Harbor Air's corporate headquarters and main base. Regional airlines, including Pacific Coastal Airlines and Central Mountain Air, primarily operate from the South Terminal, offering flights within British Columbia. Chartered flights are also served from the South Terminal. Burkeville is a village situated on Sea Island in Richmond, British Columbia, adjacent to Ross Baker Way. The village was built in 1943 by the Canadian federal government. It was primarily established to accommodate workers employed at the Boeing-operated plant. The village was named after Stanley Burke, who was the president of Boeing at the time. The Centennial Rocket was originally created in 1936 for the Pacific National Exhibition Jubilee Parade, commemorating Vancouver's 50th birthday. It was displayed at the first Vancouver Air Terminal from 1939 to 1972, before being dismantled due to rust. In 1985, a replica of the rocket was built by Terminal Sheet Metal and Sheet Metal Workers Union 280 to celebrate Vancouver's centennial. It was relocated to its current site in the Barbara Howard Plaza, near the southwest end of the Canby Street Bridge. The rocket space houses a centennial time capsule containing items from 1986, scheduled to be opened 50 years later. The time capsule includes artifacts such as an Expo 86 passport with stamps from all the pavilions and recorded messages from local celebrities. As the years unfold, one cannot help but wonder what the future holds. Perhaps by the year 2036, the rocket will once again ignite its engine, propelling itself towards new heights, symbolizing Vancouver's unyielding pursuit of greatness and evoking pride in the hearts of its residents. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.